This week on the Grand Theory Podcast. Yeah. Now, the next question I have for you is, when do you know to be with a team? Uh, and how do, you, ha- how, do you how, do you, how do you choose a how team? How do you choose a team? Because what if you choose... I think Michael wrong. can talk better on that. <laughs> yeah. Because we, yeah, how do, Michael how, is the team cause, guy. Because, like, no, the reason, the reason why... The reason why, the reason why, the reason why Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. We in the building. Oh What's going on, my man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. This guy has me on this chair with no back support. Bro, I had to go to the struggle last week. What you mean? You're lucky I have a strong back, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's what we use it to all those stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I'm not going to put you on back. I'm going to see. You know what? I told you. Listen, the people out there, I'm going to let Kyrie expose him. I'm not, I'm not going to expose yo, him. Yo, Kyrie, we're not having you back on no more, nah, man. See, I'm sorry, bro. Hard. Come Sorry, on, have you, man. Sorry, bro. We're gonna put, the, we're gonna put a few Ambrose to the world, you know. You know what? We'll have you back on, mm. but we're gonna make you sign a contract before you come back on. Nah, bro. Listen, see. Non disclosure. Listen, 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 see. I edit. Remember, I still treat oh, the same true. house too. Like, I'm just gonna put my phone, just record it, and then put, like, true. this is what Q Ambrose does. <laughs> That's true. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway, anyways, how you been, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I can't complain. You know. What we do first things first. Always, you know, the big man up there. Always, always. First things first, we got to give thanks to God. Yes, sir. Because he is the reason that we could be here in the first place to always. do the podcast, that we are alive, that we you have know. energy, you yes, know, sir. everything like that. So first things first, we want to thank God for giving us the ability to be here, for yes, our sir. guests, our listeners, everyone out there. So first things first, thank God. Yes, sir. Now for the recap from last episode, Ooh. last episode, go on, man. we had the guy Ryan McKenzie on. The traveling man. The traveling man, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it was a great, great episode. Yeah. It was an episode where one of the big things that he, one of the big things that he brought up was being the freedom to be yourself. Yeah. You know, the freedom of being yourself, staying true to yourself. Yeah. Not only that, but also traveling, you yeah. know. Getting to travel and experience different things because when you travel, you get to experience how different people live. You yeah. see different cultures, yeah. different styles, different, everything, different everything. You know. I remember the man saying, "You wish you went to Croatia alone." <laughs> yeah, I did. you wish you went someplace you want to go alone. You know. So, uh, so no, it was it was a great great episode. Lots and lots of gems. Um, make sure you guys go and check that out. But today. Today we got a new victim in the building. We shouldn't say victim, maybe our guest. I guess I guess we got a new guest in the building. Yes, sir. So today our guest is originally born in Rwanda. Hmm, Africa, man. I like and that. they came to Canada around twelve years, around twelve years old. Came to Canada. And uh they became a, they wanted to become an artist yeah. at age 14 and not only that but from that from that passion that he had as an artist he decided to do audio engineering Hmm. where he did a portion of his audio engineering at at grant McEwen, and his other half he studied at who i might mess up the word of this car pixel pixel blue university Hmm. um not only that but this guest that we have on has his own podcast, which is called the Building Bridges Podcast, boom, boom. where actually on the episode they were able to interview the commissioner of police. So make sure you guys go check that out. Not only that, but he also has his own studio, the Commuto. Yeah. So without further ado, boom. let us introduce Alan Ntwali. Nice. No, I'll put the sound effect, don't worry. Don't worry. The, oh, the clapping sound effect. need some glass. Okay. Yo, okay. Now I see. Yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. This guy, this guy messed it up. (laughs) Messed up the mic. What he do? So, my guy. Thank you for having me. In the building. 
I like the choice, the hat, the bucket hat. You know, <laughs> we out here. You see this guy. Yeah. This guy. They left me alone. I got yeah, people they, out there spying on you they, yeah. to make sure you know I pull up and I'm you, wearing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bucket hat, all black in yeah, the what building. What is he wearing? You know. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him though. You know, after I shit him so much and then you know the middle. You know, that's why this guy shitted me until I lost all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even take this hat off no more. I actually don't usually wear bucket hats. I never worn one. But really? today I was just you know what? I'm gonna just rock yeah, it. I like and then I come out and like hey you listen. Ah. I should have taken a fisherman hat. <laughs> you should have. You should have. You should have. It is what it is. Anyways, you ready? Yes, sir. Oh, I, I, I almost forgot. I, I almost bro. forgot. Nah, we need to get that, bro. For real. We, we, do. Bro. we do. We do. Uh, I told you no medal. I chase. want medal. I want it to be real, bro, man. Bro, chase the guest away, bro. Listen, let <laughs> me hey, come on hey, no hey, fake podcast, man. <laughs> no fake podcast, man. Let's get it. Straight. Yeah. Let's get it. Dissection time. Yes, sir. So, my man, Alan. What he do? Tell us about what it was like being born in Rwanda, what it was like growing up, and tell us some of your most memorable experiences or memories from back home and from growing up. Well, it was um, it was a, a, a rough start. I was born in the middle of um, the famous genocide. Right. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let me, let me, let me. where pretty much both my parents were the group that was being hunted really? and killed Damn. yeah oh. uh when i was born it was towards the end of it mm. okay. yeah but it was still one of those scenarios where the hospital i was in it was still protected by the army and you know there was like security oh. crazy security checks right that's scary yeah so i was pretty much born on a move and um grew up you know two three uh, years old I'm seeing you know there's like gunshots all over this bus because yeah the genocide is officially done but there's still like the leftovers Those, yeah after and effects, they're, they're kind of cleaning up at the last minute type thing um went to school when the first time I went to school I remember one of the most uh interesting stories sad too mm. is uh my school was called Kam Kigali mm. okay. Kigali is the capital city of Rwanda and this school used to be a military base Hmm. yeah so they cleaned up the top part and they made it a school okay but this the side on the south has, still has tanks and, and all that stuff oh. so during the break we'll go in the tanks and roll the, the guns up and you know like I, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. obviously i got no what no 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 no, 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 yeah. no okay okay, yeah. okay okay yeah but you know you play with the guns you point them in different directions and right. then uh one of the times teachers would obviously like not be happy with that so they yeah. would come out and get us out up there so this one day just like every other day we're going there we're playing and then somebody looked in the mirror and they saw a teacher coming from behind they, oh we're all gonna run somebody jumped and then they landed on a, on a landmine so boom so like a bunch of kids just went flying man i was a youngin but i remember seeing parts and parts over there so yeah, it was oh. it was it was a rough start. Damn. Yeah, Damn. but life got better. Obviously, by the time I left there, Rwanda was like the thirteenth country in the world, the safest yeah, the country yeah. in the world, thirteenth safest country in the world. So that, so that was that was a big shift though from 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 since you were growing up initially what it was like at first. Yeah. To that, yeah. so like, what was the how was that shift? Like, did you see notice it um, gradually, or was it like instantly? Like, I think. Because when you think about it, when a million people die in three months, mm. yeah, it's a big number. People, everybody's at some point. Everybody just like, okay, we're done with this. Yeah, yeah. So when the government, the uh, the current government took over, it was easier to just start the reconciliation pro mm. uh, program okay. and kind of push people in different directions. Yeah. Especially because everybody was like, yeah, we we don't want to do none of this, yeah. right? So it was all they needed was guidance, and they did get guidance. And from there, everybody was just like, "Yeah, we're neighbors. We're neighbors." Hmm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, just to stay on, I stay on that. Is how did that like? I mean, like I would think that obviously had an impact on you, like going forward in your life, right? Yeah. Like seeing that at a young, like at a young age, that's yeah, something scary. like a that's a traumatic experience, yeah. right? Yeah. So, how would you say like? Um, what effects did that have on you, like growing up, like throughout your childhood or you know into adulthood? There is, I mean, it shaped my, 
it shaped me in ways that I, I'm starting, even like the older I grow, the more I start looking back and I'm like, oh yeah, the, these stories that they're telling me, now it makes sense why mm. this part of me functions the way it does. Mm. So there's a big chunk of it that I still have to unfold. It's mm. been a learning right. experience because, yeah. you know, like we never got a chance to really process it's it. You know, it's yeah. just like, oh yeah, there's a bunch of kids, like legs and, you know, scary, right? hands and all that. And then you, hey, you go back to school the next day. That's like scary. nothing that, happened, that's, right? That's scary. That's actually, yeah. wow. That's very wow. scary. Yeah, so you get, you get back and you start thinking about right. it. Now I can oh, process yeah. it and be like, whoa, like that was actually crazy. Yeah. Right? And also just teach you resilience, man. Like hold mm. together. And you, mm. it, I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of those like biggest optimists. Mm. And I think it comes from that too. Just seeing how a country literally was like, went to shit yeah. and then within like a period of like if you look at Rwanda right now it's like but an exemplary Simple. country right yeah. so that kind of brought that optimism yeah. out of me yeah. yeah okay so I have a question so would you say when you like we don't really fully know the story of when you moved away from Rwanda to Canada but mm -hmm. my question is when you came here and you saw the lifestyle but you were like, damn, a lot of people don't understand how lucky they are. Like, yeah. how lucky they are with what they have. Yeah. Did you say you, had, you saw that? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. To this day, like, when I hear people just like, the the, the things we take for granted, mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, like, bro, like, there's people literally like, who would kill to have the, the simplest For things sure. that we have here, right? Yeah. There's mm -hmm. people who still walk miles and miles to go get water to cook. True. And we're here, you know. Yeah, true. It's true. Just wasting water and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, when you like, even like, even the basic, like electricity. Some countries don't have twenty four seven light. Yeah. Or yeah. internet, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, like, bro, like, bro, for real. Like, like you can go out, charge your phone, go out, and you know, like, when I get home, I'm gonna have light. Mm. Some countries are like, nah, that's not possible. Yeah. yeah. The moment you have light, you gotta plug your phone in to charge. Mm. Or like internet, like the big bro, basic necessity. They don't have it. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, it's I guess that's why that's why same thing with Ryan. Like when you travel to those different countries and you see yeah. the lifestyle, you be like, okay, now like I gotta think, like I appreciate what I have. It puts things into perspective the, for perspective, you, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think uh, I think that's actually why like uh, a lot of people from third world countries or from like foreign countries when yeah. they come to Canada, they do so well because like they're coming from their country where they can see like that it's not. There's so yeah. many things that opportunities that we don't yeah, have, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then you come here, like back home in St. Vincent, it's nice, but there's lots of opportunities for things to that you can do here that you can't do back there. Yeah. So when you come here, like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can yeah. do this, right? So I think that's, uh, I think that's really cool. Nice. So, um, so, so you came here when you're about 12 years, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of tell us about how that process. How did you, how did you end up coming to to Canada? I was just one of those lucky ones. My my dad made it uh, here first. Mm. Yeah, and he was lucky to get the citizenship. And obviously, just like every other parent, man, like you want the best for your children, mm -hmm. right? And at the time, the schooling is definitely much better here and what have you. So, yeah, it's just like, yeah, come for, sure. for a better, to, in search for that better life, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Nice. So now you get to, to Canada here now, right? Mm -hmm. Now you see it's a whole, it's like a whole different environment, a whole different atmosphere. Like, what was your first kind of initial, like when you got here, what was your shock? first, yeah, what's your, yeah. I'm going to say this and I'm going to probably sound <laughs> stupid, <laughs> 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 but I don't care. We'll say we're going to no. just adoption, we'll, 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 unfiltered, yeah, yeah, let's go. We'll, yeah. People kissing in public. Uh, PDA <laughs> <laughs> specifically kissing. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Who uses this? Whoa! I'll get I you know. guys a room. Like, shit. like True. I was on a train. Yep. Yeah, I was on the train, and then I saw this couple. You know, it's like PDA, and I'm already like weirded out. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. And then they started like making out in the train. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what's this? What's this? I called my uncle. He was back home. I called him. I was like, you cannot believe this. 
Yeah. And he's like, he, he was also like, oh, if I was there, I'll probably go to jail. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'll probably like punish these people because that's the mentality <laughs> they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, that's true. No, there's no, yeah, there's yeah, no, no like, PDA. You can't do PDA. PDA. You can't, you can't do PDA back That was the nah. first thing that I was like, I was that's shocked, true. man. And that's then, true. Yeah, that's it's, it's, true. it's in Canada, like Western countries where people just kiss outside. Back home, right? You don't see that. I never thought about that, but actually, yeah, I, don't see yeah. that. I don't actually ever notice that. Yeah, back you home. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't. Nah, you don't. Huh. Yeah, and then you get, and then I go to class to school, and you probably connect with this because you're, you're you're from Africa. Yeah, I don't know about the the Caribbean mm. system, but it's most likely the same thing. Calling your teacher by name. Oh, ah, that's true. Boy, never, bro. Never. Yeah, that's true. Black hand. That's true. Bro. That's never, true. That's true, bro. It was gotta, Black hand. It was got to put the mister. Bro, bro. not even mister for us. Yeah. You have to Uncle. say teacher. Teacher, that's true. Yeah, that's and true. then I say I, I say teacher, and my teacher looked at me. He's like, yo, like, call me Del Chopo, bro. Yeah. So and then me, I was like, I was Ryan, uncomfortable. Call me something. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I was uncomfortable. That's true. <laughs> bro, that's, yeah. a, that's something that hit me, too, is like, Bro, you got. I always say like auntie or uncle, uncle or, or or your pops or yeah. your gra- like yeah, never yeah, by the yeah, first, first name because that's like ultimate Black disrespect, man. Like, yeah, yeah, you true. call. You know what's gonna happen to you if you call yeah. somebody by their first name? That's true. Even if there's like, because back home, they're like. uh Anyone that's older than you can discipline you. Yeah, facts. Like, you even, if, get, even, even if it's just a year, bro. Like, even if it's a year, you can get that's disciplined. Yeah, whoop. So you think you could call somebody by their first name, <laughs> bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mistakenly texted one of my aunties. She lives in South Africa, and I forgot to put auntie. Mm. And then she calls me like a couple of weeks later, and she's like, "You think you think we're friend now? <laughs> you <laughs> you think friend? Now? <laughs> think I'm your friend now? I'm your auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I'm sorry. I didn't even notice what I did there. No, but you you know what though? I think like it's like little small changes, but I think that those little things they make a big impact because like. It's like a, it's like a, um, like a discipline thing, yeah. right? It's like when you're home and you're calling everybody by their, fir- like not by their first name, either like your auntie this or uncle well, this or whatever yeah, like that. Yeah. It's like a respect thing. Yeah. When you come here and call someone by their first name, but like, hey, hey, yo, Kate, or whatever like that. Yeah. It's like they don't notice it, but I feel like it's like a disrespect thing. You know what okay, I'm saying? Like yeah. it's, it's like true, a. True. That's why I feel like. Uh, people that are from third world countries are like have a little, they have like different values yeah, and yeah, morals, and you know yeah, what I mean? True. Like a different, that's true. Here's an, an interesting thing about that, too is like, whenever at least I'm speaking from my experience, people that are that I know that are around me or that I went to school with, mm. you always find that people with uh African Caribbean origin, yeah, they come in too. There's mm. those who are extremely respectful, mm. extremely. You know, like chill and laid back, and yeah. you know, you're my elder. I respect you. And then there's the ones that are just like rude, this. <laughs> rude, <laughs> yeah. rude man. Yeah. But when and when I started looking at it, it was it was when I was in high school, and I would just see these kids that are just like, yeah, like I might disagree with the teacher, but yeah, they didn't do anything that would cause you to mm. cast them out, mm. right? And I started just realizing that is when you get here and you see how the system is, some people just take advantage Absolutely. of it and abuse it, mm-hmm. right? Oh, so if I cuss my teacher out they're not gonna beat me up oh so i'm just gonna do it yeah <laughs> right because uh, for I too long you've been in this environment yeah. where you're just yeah. living in fear yeah. 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 yeah you can let go and just leave out that's true yeah. that's true yeah, yeah. No, but back true. home just a small mistake my guy bro yeah i swear bro double man this guy's giving me memories man jesus yeah you know you know what though like i don't i don't miss not that i don't miss i don't uh I don't regret any of the beatings or none of that, that I got when I was back home, man. Because yeah. I think that that stuff, like, if they didn't beat me or they didn't discipline me, you'd probably go worse. Yeah, it's true. Time I mean, out and stuff is yeah, not gonna work has, for me, man. Like the thing about, <laughs> yeah, true, no, no, realistically, like the thing, the thing about that ass whooping is that, like, bro, there's the pro and there's the con. The pro is, mm. it, it depends on what you do. If you do like a stuff where I know that it's very addictive, I don't care if I'm, I will whoop your ass. But like, <laughs> but like if it's something that is just like talking, there's some stuff that you can just have a conversation yeah. and work. Why does some stuff that if it's addictive or it leaves an addictive trait? Nah, man, you gotta get because when you get that ass whooping, the next time you want to do it, you be like, yo, ah, shit, yeah. my ass go red, go, oof, nah, run away from it. You know what I mean? You think about so, it. It's I also, know. I don't know, man. Like, I used to think like that, and I'm not saying I don't, because yeah. I'm I'm still in between. Like I'm like, I always wonder because I feel like the system that they have here. Yeah also works if not taken advantage of like yeah. if if, mm. if if put to use in the right way 
it's okay. very effective mm. because but the, you create a relationship with your son with your true, daughter but this, right. is what, this is what the problem is mm -hmm. it's hard for kids especially at a young age that you see an opportunity and not take advantage of you know what i mean when yeah. you see that you can do something bad and the worst you just have is a conversation but even with that but, though yeah right because to me the way i look at it for me it's like and i've been having this conversation with my dad recently do just about things around mm. and i'm uh, i don't know maybe he also has a background in business and where i am in life in terms of the business side of things mm. but i'm a firm believer in just like failing man True. Mm. right so mm. like if the kid i Heart give that. myself as an example yeah i was Heart exposed that. to the wars of the wars yeah. yeah you know yeah i was in circles where they would do like all kinds of drugs man yeah. i'll be that guy sitting in the middle and i'll be passing it to the next person yeah. mm -hmm. but never yeah. not yeah. once have i touched any of that yeah put it on my mouth yeah. right mm -hmm. so and that's that relationship that i had i, I built with my parents yeah. for example right my yeah. dad was never uh, one so, to beat me yeah, a whole yeah. lot right yeah. but we, we he would just sit me down and tell me hey this is the this this pros this is the cons of yeah. this thing right yeah. and if you choose this this is your choice where it's gonna take yeah. you yeah. if you choose this this is what's gonna happen to yeah you, right and since then it just it was more of like okay i'll take I, I was always given choices yeah. and then i would choose this or that right yeah. but when i chose that even i even when i chose the bad thing the first thing he always asked my mom was like does he still go to school mm. my mom would be like yeah he's like okay he's gonna be all right just just give him time yeah, yeah. right true, true. and once you build that relationship with them because you gotta do these things man you gotta fail imagine the things that you look back on and that mm. shapes you today yeah true mm. no, and true. if your parents knew that you're doing them back then oh, definitely mm. oh no no no, no <laughs> it would no, have been a different case oh right? no 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 yeah mm. no 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 like i agree with you like it helps like the biggest thing i just think is like knowing your kid like no because like for example your dad probably understood you you mm. knew that even if you made your mistake, like whatever mistake you made, mm -hmm. you still had the ability to still bounce back from it. Or you still have the ability to like still respect that freedom. Because it yeah. is a freedom, technically. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, especially if you're still living with them, it's a different, like, it's still a freedom. Mm. But like, what I'm saying is like, a lot of kids, from what I've seen is, they, they give them that freedom and then they overuse it. Mm. That, that's, that's what I was saying about that as swooping. Because mm -hmm. like, if it was, for example, I have a kid where, oh, you're free to go out with your friends, whatever, whatever. But then you overuse it and then you like you disrespect that freedom that's when the ass whooping comes in mm -hmm. it's gotta be a balance of like, both. like yeah that's a balance mean? of both like because you can give them the freedom but i'm like especially when you're growing up when they give you so much freedom you don't know what to do I, you, you know what i mean you know what i think i think every kid is different yeah because yeah, yeah. not every kid needs to get whooped right? yeah that's, that's what i'm saying but yeah. like i know for me personally yeah, talking to me is not gonna work like, yeah. you, like <laughs> you, like it's just not yeah. like, i'm stubborn right yeah so like if you talk to me or if or if like you put me in time out, I'll probably just jump out the window or something or like do, do something, something else. Go back out to the same thing. Yeah. So me getting those I was swooping. Yeah. It was, was like cause I yeah, was in like, I was like, yo, I don't want to get this again. Yeah. Even though I still did it, but it like it taught it me you. valuable lessons, yeah. right? It made me more disciplined with it. But it's yeah. I think everyone is different because yeah. I don't think everyone needs that. Like yeah. my sister wasn't getting beat like that, right? Yeah. She was getting talked to, but like yeah. It was effective for her, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so I think everyone is is gotta find different. out, just figure out what, what works best. By either you have a conversation one, two times. If it fails, try the ass whooping. I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. honestly, that stuff, like, low key though, it did it like to get like fear in you though. Sometimes it, it really did. It did, especially when you did something bad and you wanted like, hey, mom, hey, dad, um, I'm trying to do this. You'd be like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah that's, that, that's the yeah. that's the only downside from oh. it. But yeah. I feel like I, it, this is why like what i said i was conflicted on where i stand on that and i think i lean more towards the like building the relationship mm -hmm. without the physical punishment mm -hmm. because what i find man is as you grow you start resenting your people right because mm -hmm. they've installed fear in you mm -hmm. right you don't do this not because you don't want to do it but because you're afraid of getting hit yeah right mm -hmm. and if that's the reason why you're not doing it how long does how long will it take until you actually be like yo f this yeah i want to do it and now you're the outcast right yeah. how mm. many of these girls that we see that are very controlled in their households yeah. 
uh, daughter of a pastor, right? Yeah, true. Oh, you go to church every, and then three, four years later, they have they, they have a child yeah. with, with uh, no husband, outside, like yeah. all of yeah. these yeah. things, right? Yeah. 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 And this is the, that time comes where they're just like, yeah, like okay, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then now it, it has to be violence, right? If you if I walk out of the house, you have to physically come on, attack yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have to go at it, right? Yeah. yeah, that's where I think most of it leads, and that's why for me it's more like the conversations can be adjusted in a sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. more serious, less serious. You just find different ways to Balance to get it. into yeah that yeah. Uh, conversation mode, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. Definitely, man, because I can't say that I regret any ass whooping I've gotten, man. I cannot say sure. I do. That's what it's like. Because that's the thing. They, they, they teach you valuable lessons. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And kind of what you said, too. The one thing that you said that I really, really liked was that, the like, leaning into that failure, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, one of the big things that we talk about on the podcast is the struggles and the obstacles, right? Yeah. That people face. Because, like, I find this from what I've observed, right, is that, People might shy away from those things. Oh, failure! It's like oh, it's a bad Scary, thing, yeah. right? You get this negative connotation with failure, but like all the people that succeeded and that do great things, you know, they had to, like you, you didn't just like you had to fail. Yeah, you had to fail and see okay and improve and keep going. Like uh, Nipsey Hussle says, he says that there's no secret to like what he did. It's just that he just didn't quit. Yeah, just like because it's along the way. He had obstacles. He had struggles along the way. Went to jail. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's different obstacles. But because he did not quit, that's when you start seeing, like, um, success results. and things start working yeah. in your favor. Yeah. So, just kind of jumping from that, you said that uh, you're also an artist. Yeah. Right? So, kind of how did that start? Like, where did that inspiration come from? Kind of what led you into that? What drove you into that? Well, generally, I come from a family of musicians. On my mom's side, uh, my two uncles were, like big artist back home mm -hmm. played on radios and on national television okay, okay. <clears throat> so because of that i, I kind of started to well actually from the time i can remember i was just always interested in music and whenever i would watch there was like the, this news program that would happen and then right after that there was like uh oh it was a tv show i can't remember the name of it but it was just talking about the top 20 of that week or something like that yeah. i would just be like glued just to posted it. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah and then i cannot remember the song but there was a song that i was watching a video and one time i just saw like a mixing board those big big, big mm. mixing boards yeah and i was like okay that that one, That's the one i gotta i gotta operate one of those at some point and then the love of the behind the scenes the mixing mm. the mastering started coming from just me operating on that machine mm. you know yeah and then the more i got to know it a little bit better then the more i actually fell in love with it more and it just, it just became a thing, thing. Just yeah, yeah. Thing. Nice. yeah. Hmm. okay so i noticed like that uh all, like all the things that you kind of did are kind of connected to that passion mm -hmm. of music right mm -hmm. like you after you know realizing that passion and seeing the mixing board of wanting to mix. Mm -hmm. Then you also went into becoming an audio, going to study audio mm -hmm. engineering. Mm -hmm. But when we were talking, what led to that? What led to you making a decision like, hey, you know what? I think I want to do audio engineering. Was it strictly just because you wanted to mix a master or was it was there other factors that influenced it, that? It was generally one of my biggest influences in, in music to get all together was just like Timbaland and Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that they always had. They had the the, the producing, mixing, mm -hmm. mastering thing behind them. Nice. Although they're artists as well. But I even got more inspired when I got here and I started just watching how I had the passion to write, I had the passion to record. But then you'll go to a studio and they'll charge you seventy five dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Now and at that yeah. time you you don't have a job right and you're yeah, like you yeah, know what yeah. i don't have a job but i can still get admitted to college yeah yeah true still you yeah. know <laughs> that's, that's, true. Still. that's true, true still. that's a bar right there yeah. so i just i just took that's that, that. Yeah. Still. took that out yeah. nice. yeah. like in school you pay the money and then you have a studio to do your stuff in yes mm. yes yes while learning yeah. the skill and that's like actually my uh so yeah like i did go to school and I didn't like the theory part. I just like to practice because I get to use the equipment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then when I got into uh, 
pixel blue that that's the biggest part of it man like every, from you only in, you're only in class the first week mm. and then the last week anything oh. in between you're in studio damn oh yeah okay like and like fit like a, a, the actual physical actual studio. physical studios so yeah. it's every does the class held there or are they just so the class your 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 desk technically has a producer kit oh that's yeah, sick. yeah so that's you have your, your, your workstation 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 wow. oh that's actually and then we sick. have a, a main studio that's outside wow. like that's the, the next room is an actual studio that the, the university in where is where is the university yeah at? it's a college okay. uh, pixel blue college where it's actually that? downtown okay um, oh, it's, they, have it's branch, yeah, they have a branch yeah they have a branch downtown that's in, what i wanted uh, to know it's in edmonton okay. yeah it's you right remember? on uh empire state building on jasper okay yeah. Do you remember how much it costs Ooh, about 16 for the wall for the wall program for a year 16 for a year yeah it's pretty decent. That's yeah, it's, it's good. It, it's, it, that's actually it, the value is really cause, good. Because hmm. you have a free studio. Sorry, you paid for it, but you have like a studio with all the equipment you need. Twenty four hour access. Twenty four hours for a year. Yeah, they, they give you those proxy cards where you, you Yo. can. Can you, can you yeah. always bring in someone like to absolutely twenty four? Yeah, and yeah. Even, they get a, they get a, yeah. Put that on blast, man. Ain't nobody know what. Like even know. when I left, they even today I can still go use the studio there. Really? Yeah, because you build the relationship with them, and they 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 want you to to be successful right yeah wow. yeah so there's even programs that i've ran at my studio that i just hit up him up hey you got your you got your students that wants to spend some time in the actual studio you know bring them out yeah i mean we, we've exchanged things like that right Damn, nice. yeah and and the, the guys the like the teachers are crazy man the instructors are their resumes are impressive like this guy was on like i don't he never really liked to say it because i don't i think it's a lot of uh the politics behind the scenes mm. but he's on like some mainstream stuff yeah yeah like he would come to school and he would tell us some shit and we like, was like eh like things that would happen five years down the road he's like yeah, we're working on this oh that's sick. and then five years later so I, I i would be looking like this like a sidekick i'll go to my house and be like yo trust me <laughs> jay-z about to drop an album you know jay-z about to drop an album and then beyonce about to drop yeah, an album know. and then they're gonna drop a joint album watch this watch. i got an inside yeah. link <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, and then five years later yeah yeah so like there's they're very well connected and they're so sweet they're so nice you know uh mm. one of the guys was, was uh my instructor was amish crazy guy hmm. amazing skill and 24 hours you have studio access if you have an issue even after you graduate you can always email him and he can come and help you out and things like that mm. yeah man he's come to my studio a couple of times good good people man really good people that's very very cool we're gonna we're gonna drop the the, the links pixel to that that's pixel that's blue. very very pixel cool, blue man. college pixel that's blue very, college very, curtis very, greenland very cool, man. shout out yeah. that's very very cool shout out man yeah oh that's dope that's crazy though nice yeah but that that inspired me and then when you go there in the first week and you see how everything is you know you're just like okay i actually like really have passion for this it's, yeah yeah that when i graduated i i, I still wanted to do another year wait, yeah like yo like you sure yeah it's sure. done like, yeah. i can't stay another year <laughs> yeah. yeah it was so it was a it was a very good experience but that's good though because that's that you can see that's actually a passion of yours yeah. it's not yeah. just like a you know it's yeah. an actual passion of yours and yeah. i can see that not only with you going to that school but i can see with everything that you're doing because as an artist then you went into audio engineering mm -hmm. and then you ended up starting your own studio yeah so tell us a little bit about that what led you to start your own mm -hmm. studio yeah. and like i know if, actually okay i'm just gonna ask you what led you to start in your studio first biggest thing is just to because the reason why i went to audio engineering school was because studios and engineers were not accessible to people like me mm -hmm. right so when I was put in a position, which was honestly a blessing, you know, I just thought about that. I thought about how how me and my homeboy Selassie would bike mm. to White Ave mm. to go to J Stocks. Oh Shout out to J Stocks, man, good people, uh, uh, right? But he, he had a business, a business to run, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But still, prices were not it. But you know, we'll go in there and hustle, hustle, hustle. You know, make some money, and then me and him, we used to us on a bike, go to White Ave and get one track done because we only had like an hour window yeah. and we have this other track now we have to go work work work, work. so we can go in go for another in. hour yeah. and it was just one of those things where you're like you know 
I got this and I, I've been in the place where I needed it, yeah. right? So mm. if I have this, why can I not let people use it and, yeah. and make it accessible to those people specifically? And that's why the community specifically, the name is Community mm. Studios 2, two in that. 1. I know that's yeah. that. Right. Yeah, so... And that, that was the, the, the purpose, the intention behind it. The, the intention it. behind it was to, to get the youth, the young, the youngins, man, in the studio and just get him. You don't even have to record. You can mm. watch me mix. You can watch me master. Mm. You can, you know, we had people come through and just paint. Mm. Yeah, we just wanted to create a spot where it's just like the, the tagline is uh, a space where uh, community meets in the studio mm. huh, right mm -hmm. and yeah you pull up even you don't have nothing to do you but you, you, you want to be inspired by artists just pull up because it gives you a chance to see other different People creatives in their element you know yeah, yeah, doing yeah, their thing yeah so that was the goal and obviously things happens in terms of like the pandemic in mm -hmm. terms of like rent in terms of like mm. and that's where you can never look away from the the finance aspect of it mm. right but to me where the, the the line draws where the line is drawn is are you asking more than you need because then that's when you start making it not accessible to people right mm. but if you need this bottom line to to function yeah mm. if you get this quarter you're good right so why make it mm. harder for everybody else i got a question for you on just on that mm -hmm. so so okay you have to you have to be able to make enough money to cover your expenses right yeah. But you also want to provide a service like your intention behind making your, your, your the community is to have a studio where you can have community, give young people a chance, give people a chance to come in and watch the art. Right. Mm -hmm. So h how do you balance like paying for your expenses mm -hmm. and making a profit with like providing, back providing the providing the opportunity for people without yeah. like. Like, because you're trying to make money still, yeah, but you're also yeah. trying to like, how do you so, how do you balance that? I, I, so you do. I think it's the same same stuff. Like probably running a business, but also giving back to the community. Yeah, I guess. I, I get the 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 answer is in the question. The answer is balancing. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. even though the question is about balancing, balancing, but the answer is literally balancing because you have to just. The reality is, you need money to function as a business. That's yeah. just reality. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, but the community aspect of it is when you start looking at things like scheduling, right? Saying, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is open for community. Mm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is, is business as usual, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when it turns into a studio, for example. Mm. Just looking at models that works for both mm. and just creating those windows that mm. are spe specifically for this community and then mm -hmm. these other windows specifically for this community and separating them because the mm -hmm. moment you start mixing them up yeah, it, doesn't it also becomes a problem right sure. sure yeah so if this is community then this is the window for community if this is money right and you you've come to one of our events mm -hmm. uh, that we put together mm -hmm. with la connection um that that's one of those ways to give back Mm. charge was free like mm. you don't yeah, pay nothing you just come and dance you know expenses on us and you know if we do make something off the bar we make something off the bar but the the whole idea is to just bring people out wow. and give them a good time right yeah, mm. yeah. I, I i like that a lot i like i like that that um that intention behind what you what you're doing a lot mm -hmm. my question that i have for you is so mm -hmm. You're doing lots of different things, right? Mm -hmm. Audio engineering, you're running your studio, you also have a podcast, you're doing yeah. other things as well. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is like the most important, uh, I guess like personality trait that someone in your career, your industry should have to, ex to be successful? I don't know, I can, I can guess because I'm obviously not at the level I wanna be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but there's there's things that are just a given, right? Like you gotta be consistent, for example. Mm. That's Preach. that's mm. that's just a given Key. in a anything that you do, right? Mm. Um, you gotta be passionate about it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, you gotta want to. You gotta wake up wanting to do this yeah. thing, yeah. right? Mm. Yeah. And and your heart has to be in the right spot. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're doing something with this end goal, but in your mind you have another and goal like you know seven. that is that, that is different from what you're telling people yeah, then, then. 
somehow it collides you know oh, always yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and it collapses at the end of the day so you just have to to be true to yourself and then once you find that one thing that you you're really about be passionate about it and be consistent mm. and just skins from man i don't know if you, i don't know if you follow him um patrick bet david i don't know if you've heard of him before no i actually look him up mm. literally what you just said same idea I think I was I think I was telling you so he has like a 2020 20, 20, 20 no 20 20 20 20, 20 rule. So mm. the first 20 20 years of your life you try to avoid any crazy stuff. No jail, don't be in a car where you can get caught having drugs something like that or cre- having a kid whatever. Avoid that. To the next 20 years it was like find one stuff and focus on that stuff. Like put 100% something you're passionate about and put 100% of that into your life like into for the next 20 years. And it was like I'll tell you the crazy goal. It was like by the end of by the age of forty, it was like have a hundred million in your account. Like not 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 the, like not the network. Like how much you actually like your network. How much mm-hmm. you, when I when I heard, it, I was like, yo, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, but then he said something. It was like there's no way as a man like if you or anyone actually you focus something for the next twenty years of your life, hundred percent that you can't make it, mm-hmm. especially when you're consistent. Yeah. yeah. And then if, yeah. like that was so it falls back to like what you said where you were like passion. Like you, you gotta, you gotta be consistent, stuff like that. So just mm-hmm. yeah, it's about head. consistency, and it's like on on the other side, it's also knowing when to quit, and that's another mm-hmm. big thing, right? True. And that's where we started when mm-hmm. we talked about failure altogether. Yeah. People mm-hmm. associate with associate quitting with failure, mm-hmm. and yo, I'm not a quitter. I'm not. But like you know, like the definition of insanity is doing the same, same thing, thing over and over, expecting a different result. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. like how far do you go until you start realizing, yo, like, I got it. So, so I have a, I, I have, I have a question. Right. Maybe my, I don't know if it be the same stuff you want to say, but my que- might, might be the same, might not be the same. But my question is, when does someone know when to ah. quit? Cause like, <laughs> the cause connection. Like, yeah, no, no, because like, because like, because like, yeah, it might be. This is this is how me I see it. It might be you might be bullshit like working out for the next five years, different clients like when am I gonna get there? And it might just be the moment you quit. It might be the clients after you quit that you might get that you might have that breakthrough. Mm. So my question to you is, when do you think that like okay when you, when you get to when you get to this point, it's time for you to quit? Yeah. It's different for everybody. It, I don't think there's a there's a, a universal okay. thing about it. But for me, I think for me personally, I know when it's time to quit when i look at the amount of energy i've invested in something yeah v- versus what I return yeah and then versus also the passion that i still have mm-hmm. right now is okay. this passion am i mm. i is it is this fake passion or is it passion passion yeah mm. and when it's when it starts feeling like this is the best way to say it, when something start feeling like work yeah. for me mm. yeah that's mm. it okay done game over yeah. I don't care five years, ten years. If it's, if I wake up and it doesn't feel like a passion, yeah. it you're feels not, like you're not, work. You're not excited to go and do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It feels like just That's doing it. A, it feels like doing a regular nine to five job. So, yeah. but, but what if what if you have days where like okay like okay say for the podcast like I like I really love doing the podcast right, mm-hmm. but say we're booked for the whole week double mm-hmm. like back to out. back. It's going it's going to feel like work. So how, like how do how do I know when like maybe I'm I'm just pushing myself too hard as opposed to like. It's actually not a passion for me anymore. No, there, no, like, like again, the pa- the whole passion to get to anything, you have to put in the work for sure, for mm-hmm. sure. And yeah, it is work as much as it is our passion. There's efforts yeah. that we have to put in, right? Yeah. But the moment those efforts are no longer exciting, exciting mm-hmm. for you. Okay. The moment okay. you're you're starting to think, Yo, do I put this energy in this thing or do I put it in this other thing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then so, you're like, so I have a question to that though. Cause there's one thing. There's one like I like operating like a reality based mm-hmm. um, mindset, which is like I agree with you in the sense of when you start feeling like work. But there's some days where you're like it actually feels like that passion is not gonna be there. You you know what? I, so what I what, what I mean by this is just like what he said. You have back to back to back podcast like guests coming in. You have to go back to back to back to edit those stuff. Mm-hmm. At that, it's gonna get to a point where it's gonna feel. Like it's gonna feel like work. You're gonna be like, I want to take a break from this. I think where I see things differently from y'all is, for example, if I'm in your shoes, for example, yeah. given that example, yeah, yeah. the reason why it's starting to feel like work is because you're here doing the podcast, yeah. and then 
going behind the scenes and editing yeah. and then doing the marketing and then yeah. doing everything right mm. and that's when that division of labor is important so for example mm. for my podcast right i have mm. literally my job is to pull up we invite the guest pull up sit down talk and then dave we call him sound sound man dave yeah. grabs you. it and then cuts everything i hate editing video yeah yeah and then we go back and forth with the audio mm. uh i would put input here i'll put input here but generally everything is always good dave is, is an amazing sound tech yeah mm. he's an amazing engineer Shout himself to dave. yeah dave. sound man dave so yeah. so like if for me i understand that my passion mm. is not editing video mm, yeah, my pa- my sure. passion is to come to this mic and talk about this issue yeah okay so so i guess what you're saying is so i'm just, i'm gonna follow up with a question so mm-hmm. what you're saying is try and build a team i'm guessing a team is important okay yeah. yeah now the next question i have for you is when do you know to build a team uh, and how do you how, how do you how do you choose how do you choose a how team, you choose a team? Cause Cause you, what if you choose i think michael can talk better on that because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah how do, michael how, is like, the team cause, guy because because like no the reason the reason why the reason why the reason why i asked that question is because yeah it falls back to the same guy I mentioned. Because right now, I'm actually like deep in his stuff. Mm-hmm. So Patrick by Dave, you guys should check him out. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I think he's used to channel value entertainment or something like that. Mm-hmm. So he was like, he actually mentioned it. Find something you're passionate about. Build a team. That I, can't remember, I can't fully remember the other steps. But I built a team. And I know you mentioned it. I'm pretty sure everyone knows this guy, Gary V. Get, mm-hmm. Oh, of course. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So Gary. I was watching an episode of him and we were talking with a guy. And the guy was like asking him, when do you know when to build a team? And Gary V was like, right now at the spot you are don't even think about it it was like develop us develop your point develop your skill to a point where you know that you're good and then because then when you know when you have that skill so say for example you're you're good at yeah like you're good at video editing for example Mm -hmm. if you want to hire somebody on your team if you're good at video editing you can you know that you know you're looking for you know the style you have you know what your podcast is about it's just like when i was saying about like we should get an editor for the podcast you said something like what if the quality drops then I thought I was like, you know what, that actually makes sense because we have a style of what the podcast looks like. We have mm-hmm. an energy we're trying to push. If we develop our skill to the point where we know, okay, this is what I'm looking for. This is the exact stuff. Mm-hmm. It's easier to pick, like pick the person you're looking for. So my question for you is like, when do you know to build a team? And like you said, how do you build a team? I'm just curious. Cause like, no, you build a team when you cannot expect the team to take your vision because okay. you have to, you mm. have to start first, right? Okay. You have to start. Okay. And then once you start, then mm. when work gets too much, like you're saying, okay. that's mm. when you know, okay, I need to bring in somebody to at least do the cuts okay. before I come in to edit. Okay. Because mm. you want you don't want to drop that quality. Okay. Mm. At yeah. some point, that's also going to get too much when you have mm. back to back, back to back, back yeah. right? Mm. Okay. So then you're like, okay, so I have this, per- I've worked with this person enough times yeah. that they understand what we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Now you can, you're the editor, right? Yeah this person is the video person then that's when you start building a team because then you start looking at how much because yeah i I understand i i agree with the concept of trying and walking as far as you can first yeah right because then you set the tone if Mm. anybody joins you to join your team they know what what they're working into right yeah yeah and then from that point on work does get too much for me as an artist for example i i struggle a lot with things like being a mixing engineer is is a is a is a blessing and a curse especially having passion for it yeah. mm. i never turn down anybody who sends yeah. me a track to mix mm. i never say i have my own stuff to work on mm. right as a result i'll go for four years without doing yeah. a show yeah right because yeah. i'm too busy doing the behind the scenes stuff yeah. right yeah. but say the moment i started realizing that i might have to to get into this situation where i just put everybody on hold mm. right or mm. and or maybe bring on another engineer who's gonna mm. be taking care of all that, mm. right? At least for me, the steps that I had to make to to address that for myself is, I decided I wasn't gonna mix my own stuff, mm. right? Because okay. work piles up, number one, and I'm never satisfied with my own the stuff. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just like, you know what? To avoid that work, so my job is gonna for my own music. My job is to write and record it, yeah. and then I'm gonna send it to somebody else to do, to do the job, right? Nice. Mm-hmm. And then also the concept of a team to me, sometimes it's like, yeah, you hire people, you pay them. Usually that's the most effective way. Yeah. But there's reality. Yeah. We're we're in Edmonton, Alberta, where our premier is Jason Kenney. Yeah. 
That's the question. So it <laughs> but that's for people, people, in, people in the country, you understand. For people in that, you understand. But yeah. Us, so yeah. without without getting too political, yeah. Yeah. is the reality is people don't have money to to hire a team, especially for yeah. you if you're in the multimedia uh, entertainment, entertainment industry, right? That's true. right? That's true. Yeah. So what you do is you just look at people like minded, yeah. right? And you make mm -hmm. money together. Michael is is, is been great with me man michael joined us probably I've, I've known him for like years and years we've been saying oh let's Shout work let's michael. work let's work but you know things happen yeah. and mm -hmm. people get busy whatever right but like th this whole year we got together we have this other team orchard lane media that does video uh and yeah it's just a team of like they don't look to they don't come there saying how much am I getting paid an hour? Yeah. But we all, all of us understand that that's the end game. That's where we want to get. Yeah. Mm. get them. But yeah. right now, how can we as a team function? How can I support you, support you, yeah. and you support me mm. to get us to that point where we mm. all eat together, right? Mm. So if we get a gig that pays $1,000, I'm going to get mm. 500, he go get 500, yeah. right? Yeah. And then hopefully we what we try to do is if we get this one gig we're trying to do the best we can so it can get us a bigger gig yeah. and a bigger gig so if instead of 500 the next gig is going to get us a thousand a piece yeah. the next yeah. one is going to get us two thousand a piece, piece right yeah. and it's just like if people are dedicated you're talking about dedication if you're one person dedicated you can go so far and i imagine if there's five of us that are as you dedicated, can go yeah. yeah you can go even further yeah right? that's true yeah, yeah. One thing I was I was gonna I was gonna ask you is that you said is that um, whenever like when you started uh, Kamudo, right? Yeah. No one is gonna have the same like vision. F well, like no one's gonna have the same vision and drive for it like you will. Yeah. Like you can build a team, but like they're not gonna they're not gonna have that same like they might be like minded and they want to build different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. I feel like in their in in a way that it supports your vision. Yeah. But they're not gonna. Be, have the same exact yeah. vision or the same drive for your yeah. for your yes. thing. So how do you like, how do you realize that and then, like, adapt well with, with incorporating other people with not having that with them knowing that they don't have the same same vision as you. I I think, the best way to look at it, is to, I don't think the end game in my opinion is to look for somebody. Who, who shares the vision as you mm. at the end of the day for me when i think about it is this is how far i've gone now i start looking at what i'm missing mm -hmm. okay okay right okay. and i can be like oh this person can add mm. i need a videographer mm. i don't have to say i yeah. i need a videographer who has the same vision as me to make the community this to make the community that mm. no just a videographer mm. and whenever i need video hey this is the style of video i'm looking for right mm. so you just look at you just see it see what you're missing Mm -hmm. and just see the people who have the skill mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at the people who have the vision because it, it, the same vision as you yeah. okay. because that's gonna be rare nobody's gonna get in your head yeah. True. Yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah so it, it, i mm -hmm. just find it more effective to get to that point where you you, mm -hmm. you done everything you can mm -hmm. and now you're at the point you're at that point where you need help and then yeah. you look back okay i need this i need this yes. i need this i need okay. this and that's so when a, a team functions right yeah mm -hmm. in a sense like it's like a mini company yeah. everybody has their own department, own department yeah right own okay videography i need this yeah, uh, audio i need this marketing mm -hmm. this yeah, you know a big one mm -hmm. and then it just becomes mm -hmm. a, a, a a well-oiled machine yeah. that just functions right you know because mm -hmm. i know for a fact that when you have a team you can think yeah. uh say for example in a month you know you're making like 10 grand Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to very exaggerate, but when you have a good team around, you can take 10 grounds to like 50, 60 a month, especially when you have a good team. Easy, man. Yeah. yeah, easy. Because imagine, imagine, I'll use that, the same example as a musician, right? You have to write your music. You have to, if you're a producer, you have to make your beats. You have to record your stuff you have to mix your stuff and then you have to look for shows you have to, to you have to be an artist and then you have to be your own manager yeah imagine yeah. if somebody took all of that and said i got you mm. i'm not i cannot rap mm. but i but i know business yeah. Yeah. i can manage you yeah. imagine if they took that off your plate what you can do true because yeah, right? you don't have to extra true. stress at the way about that yeah true. yeah yeah so um uh, what question that i have for you is 
you know, through all your life so far that you've mm -hmm. lived and all the experiences that you've had, and you've had like some crazy experiences from young too, right? Mm -hmm. So through all those experiences that you've had, what would you say are, what's the biggest obstacle or struggle that you faced? Yeah. And what would be the biggest thing that you learned from it and how did you overcome it? The biggest obstacle is, um, in the business that we're in, mm -hmm. the entertainment industry and the landscape we're in, it's slowly starting to catch up. It's slowly starting to, to, you know, to match, but, um, biggest challenge is to come to a spot that is say, when I first got here, it was like 63% Ukrainian mm. and try to sell them hip hop. Mm. Mm, that's different mm -hmm. yeah. right mm -hmm. now later on try to go like there's this stereotype oh yeah black people go to a club there's like gunshots mm -hmm. things like that um then you you're not getting booked into these clubs mm -hmm. so you're not getting booked for festivals you're not respected right so about things that kind of go along those lines of the respect level that comes with our art mm -hmm were very challenging and we had to quickly do things like for example we had to come up with bands in mm -hmm. hip-hop alberta probably edmonton is one of the only cities in canada that has hip-hop bands hmm. wow yeah hmm. yeah I didn't know that. yeah if there is a lot there's like three other cities if if that but Edmonton is one of those cities because we had to adapt. We're looking at the white folks like, oh, yeah, they're getting booked because they, they got the band, band. Yeah. right? If I huh. pull up with my DJ, I'm yeah. going to, you know, they, they're yeah. going to look at me like, you're just that other guy who's going to bring a gang yeah, and true. then a guy, you know, gun violence will erupt after the show. So you kind of hmm. have to, to, to look at the climate and adjust, yeah. right? So that's adjust. an element that we had to, mm -hmm. to bring in and... Yeah. That's one way we adjusted. And then also as a business, just being taken legit, man, you know, mm. being taken legit. Cause, hmm. and I think this one, I hate to say it, but it has a lot to do with the race, mm. right? It has True, a lot yeah. to do with the race. Cause yeah. I have a friend of mine who, well, I used to have a friend, a uh, musician who would record in a basement, a white guy. And any time he would apply for a grant, he would get like twenty thousand hmm. dollars to record a CD. And you have a business trying to apply for the same grants. You can't get. You don't even get an answer. You don't even get a mm. no. We're not gonna give you this grant. Yeah. And it's like, hmm, mm. where's the disconnect, right? Yeah. So you you kind of hmm. you see it, but then you learn yeah. to function without it. Yeah. One thing that I've learned in this mm. business is the power of people mm. yeah like when we did that event and 400 people showed up yeah. that's power yeah that's is. power any grant you go apply for after that event you will get it but you have to do extra you have to do extra work to prove yourself mm. you know what i mean hmm. yeah man it's it's it's, it's an interesting one yeah it's tough right now yeah bro yeah so would you say that Cause from 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 kind of what you when I got there from there mm -hmm. is that the struggles of having to adapt in this new environment in this landscape, right? Yeah. But the biggest thing that helps you overcome is always being able to adjust to whatever like to yeah. whatever environment. Yeah. So like now, okay, coming here, maybe you didn't want to be in a band, maybe you just wanted to do solo. But because seeing how things operate and how it might be the best way to move forward in your music, okay, get a band, mm -hmm. right? So that it can, so that you you're adjusting, so that you can make a make a make progress, right? Yeah. So it's like a lot that. of yeah. It definitely requires a lot of adjusting, and it, one thing that you always go through as an artist is try not to lose yourself yeah. in mm -hmm. the process just to please. Somebody, somebody right yeah. but yeah. at the end of the day you also gotta eat so you're like okay how mm. much is too much adjustment mm. right True. how much is acceptable versus unacceptable and that answer is different to everyone okay. to yeah. every artist right mm. yeah for me the best way to do it was to just start my own stuff mm. and don't de just don't depend on anybody if you look at the community community is everything community mm. is a studio community is a 
is a, is a, is a promotion thing. Comedio is, a, is an event space. Comedio is everything, right? So if we build it to the point where we want it to be, say, in five years, I will not need a promoter to yeah. book me mm. for K days. Because mm. we have our own festival yeah. mm, that true. is pulling full 500 people. Yeah, true. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like okay, you don't want me in your spot. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make my own spot, yeah. make my spot own, over yeah. here. Instead Instead of, your opportunity. Yeah, instead yeah. Of, yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart, yeah. Hmm. yeah. And then people start coming after that. Hmm. Hey, next time you do an event, oh yeah, we we'll sponsor you when I needed you the most to so host my first that, event. Yeah. Get him in there. How, that, that's a, okay. I have a question. <laughs> how do you okay? How do you manage that? Because like it's hard I, I mean for me me speaking personally i feel like sometimes it's hard to not bring emotion into it like say say i invite somebody to be a, a guest on the podcast and maybe they agreed right mm -hmm. and then later on down the road they they don't show up mm -hmm. but they already agreed to it mm -hmm. you know and they don't show up and i'm asking them i'm like hey like mm -hmm. are you coming nothing mm -hmm. right yeah but then maybe they're doing it because maybe the podcast is too small or, or whatever right or they don't have time whatever yeah Right, but then say the podcast, you know, it blows up now and it's big, and then they're like, "Hey, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm free now." Yeah. How, like, how, how do you manage? Because like, how do you not like? You still have to be a business, right? But like, man, yeah. you, you know got, what I mean? It, I, I know what you mean, and it hurts. Like, um, okay, I gotta stop swearing. It hurts like a mother, mother. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day. You gotta just have to understand that that's the nature of the beast. It's business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If somebody hits me up on a, on a business level, I look at what, like, yeah, if I, you need this service from me, but what am I getting from this? Yeah. Right? That's it's it's an interactional. Yeah. It's it's an it's an interaction. Sorry, a transactional. Yeah, transactional business. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So. The same way if I invite you to my podcast and you don't pull up and then 30 years from now, the, the podcast is big and you're, you're hitting me up, I'm going to look what value you're going to bring. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Right? And that's I'm going to call you out on that shit. Too. Yeah. I'm going to be like, yo, you didn't pull out. That's not my introduction. When I needed mm, you the most, you're you not here. Yeah. Now that you see we're here, but it's all good. We're going to keep going. I'll yeah. put it out there. I'll say it. Right? Okay. But if you're bringing value to my podcast, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, because what I what I realize is that especially in this day and age, yeah, a lot of people. I don't. I I think the human stuff is like okay. If you come out, if you approach me, mm -hmm. I'm like okay, because like you want my time. Like what am I getting out of this? Mm -hmm. You know that's what I was telling. Like one thing that's one thing I really noticed about business, especially when you're starting out. Try your best not to when you're talking to people. Don't try and show them. Don't try and don't try and get something out of them. Try and give them something. Yeah, that, that, that's what I, that's what I learned recently. It's, in, it's initially that's what it is, right? But then uh -huh. you quickly start learning that everybody different. Yeah, true. Right? And that's the key thing that I kept saying is you gotta find a way to stay true to yourself yeah. throughout mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, because mm -hmm. in business, honestly, your um, your investment is your word. Yeah, you know, like there's people who would like just your word man your word counts a lot your word counts a lot and you gotta be able to that's why i felt bad that i was late yeah. mm -hmm. when i said 7 30 it's 7 30 mm -hmm. right I, even just as a respect thing yeah, i gotta yeah, yeah. respect your time yeah, yeah. right yeah. obviously things happens that yeah. are out of my control yeah. but just those things and if i say yo i'm a i'm gonna I'm give you a recording session for free I'm gonna give you a recording yeah, session for free, and I'm gonna give you that session. I'm gonna give you that service as if you're paying me yeah, the most. Yeah. yeah, you know, and those mm. things take you a long way, man. Just yeah, even true. in life, not true. just business. It's business, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you also just get to a point where you start running into those folks that are just want to use you. You want to use you, right? Oh, I know and that's when you gotta draw that line yeah. quick. And yeah. now you gotta be like, okay, you gotta use me, cool. But what, am I getting yeah, anything from it? Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. if I'm not, then just keep it, it pushing. Yeah, as another thing, no one went to walk away. That's just key. Yeah. It's yeah. key. It's to, key. It's yeah, key. No one went to walk away. Yeah. yeah. Once, you, once you see, and it's very it's very easy to spot those people that are trying to use you. As long as as long as long you keep your eyes open, it's easy. Yeah, oh, man. Because like, like, especially when you do, when you're doing a service for them, and then they're like trying to extract more from you, but not pay you more. 
or they're trying to extract more from you and then they're not giving you like referrals and stuff like that you be like mm. okay why am i doing this much for these guys when they're yeah, not actually i've done shows man. man i've done shows where a promoter got paid to to book us and you there's doors people are getting charged 50 bucks at the door for vip and people are getting charged 20 bucks for regular and there's a bar people they're getting money like money's coming in yeah and you have this idiot coming to you say yo you're performing for a hundred people though that's exposure <laughs> my guy when you're getting you're getting paid to get my guy yeah when when, 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 rent, when 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 the 30th come and i have to pay rent for my studio i'm gonna exposure. say i you're got exposure. exposure i got you That's exposure true, right? I, say, oh, right, I get you exposure you know when my truck when my truck runs out of gas on the highway i'm gonna go to the gas station and be like yo, like, yo i'll give you exposure, exposure. <laughs> like what are you yeah, talking about true. especially like if you're getting paid that's true. <laughs> especially yeah. if you're getting paid to book people yeah and it, it's those things like that that you just have to it don't matter is it is it worth is my dignity is is my art is my which is me worth, that, yeah. worth yeah. being yeah. here for that kind yeah. of disrespect yeah. Yeah. especially when you've if you've mastered the skill i'm sorry get paid Find and it don't even mean that you won't do a show for free because yeah. i will right yeah. but let's just be honest with each yeah. other right like if you, if you yeah if you if you hit me up and say yo i am planning this show and i have no money whatsoever bro i would do the show yeah. no problem just be honest yeah no worries but if you're gonna have money that's a different case so yeah and i might even be the one to tell you yo don't pay me because mm. i know the money is too little or whatever mm. right but just that honesty goes yeah. it goes a long way yeah right and that's there's a lot of those people man in in, in the industry and you probably most of y'all can so see much. it right oh, so much. and you will see it with your podcast yes. man like we did we started uh with the community we did this thing it was um cabin fever series mm -hmm. when they locked us down in pandemic and we're like you know nobody uh, artists have booked all these I'm shows serious. and they can't do them now well yeah let's just artists wants to do these shows and people are not going out but they want to see these shows as well so let's just do this thing where we do an online concert series mm. and that was cabin fever series and every thursday no every sunday we would do a live thing on facebook we would have mm. the audience interact with us yeah. and interact every weekend we would book a different artist man like the first few the amount of artists are reached out to that are my homies bro that are my homies yeah. but just didn't believe mm -hmm. you know i was like yo like you pull up man it's usually that simple so, yo yeah. pull up yo there's a show you know bring your band do this do that it's an hour it's 45 minutes it's that simple right no no hmm. no how, how you tell me how you tell me you 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 you're doing social distancing and i see you at a party yeah like, 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 it, it don't yeah, make sense right yeah. yeah and then and then the the, the thing starts getting two thousand views three thousand views here like it started yeah, yeah. growing yeah, like, and i get the phone calls yo 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 that's true yeah, yeah. I, I straight up i said i don't need you bro because I, I i i sat down the same thing i sat down and said yo what value are you gonna bring mm. yeah there's no value mm. you know? No. Yeah. I don't no, need you. At that no, point, you get real. the choice. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, for that's why. That's why I think it was the same thing with Carrie. Um, CX Carrie said it was like, when you start out, don't even try and get your homies to market your business. Like, come into your business. Don't look them. Don't look for them as customers. If they come, good. But don't look at them as customers, because like I do. Your feelings gonna get hurt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, nah, yeah, man, especially hurt. especially when you're starting out, they're like, nah, man, you're in your small business. Yeah. Like those yeah, kind of words but, but i love it though i use that i use that as motivation I nah, love yeah, that yeah. that's why that's why that's why you gotta separate your thing man like curry that curry is, is right 100 percent. like i hate when people come to my shows to support me i hate it with a passion and i'm sorry if anybody's watching they've done it i hate it i really do i'm sorry don't come to my show to support me no come to my show because you want to enjoy right. a show because yeah. i am yeah. you like my my Your stuff yeah my stuff yeah, yeah. not yeah. to support me yeah. if you're there not enjoying it yeah. i don't want to torture you I, I i'm sorry I, I don't, yeah well, i don't want no fake love i want real love yeah, yeah. And it's not even fake like i appreciate yeah, the, the effort yeah. you're going out of your way to come listen to shit you probably don't even like that's what I'm, that's why i say it's fake because like they don't like, like that's what i'm saying it's fake because like you're supporting me when you don't like it when you can especially for homeboys like if you don't like him like yo bro like yo, you gotta work on your shit 
Yeah. Like, but then when they come like, yeah, yeah, they're dancing to the music. And, and everything's like, great. Come meanwhile, back. behind the scenes, they're like, yo, this guy's singing trash, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I really, I really, because also as an artist, you, you, you don't develop. Because you, mm, you, you, you yeah. being honest. Yeah, no, yeah, you, yeah. you look at it and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm packing up spots. Yeah. yeah. Right? But these people go home and, like you say, talk yeah, about you shit. or this or that. Yeah, that right? music is mm, trash. Yeah. Like yeah. That, actually. Bro, art, like, that's why, bro, I, I, I genuinely, people that already know, I try not to have you guys as like customers, whatever. No, I don't know you. Like, I know you, but I don't want you as a customer. Bro. Because then, right there, if I take a bad, if I, I do pictures, I can take a bad picture, or like, yo, bro, oh, this is nice, this is nice. But behind the scenes, you're like, bro, this is whack. Not, yeah. Bro, you don't even understand, man. Like, <laughs> it, it's for me, I would rather perform for one person mm, and know that, that this person is like genuinely really here. Yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Than perform for. 30, 40 30, people 50. that, you know, that, that are just there to support, support me, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. He, he, but genuine. Love. It's not that it's not genuine, but like genuine love for your no, art. Your not just, is all, yeah. Not, not genuine love friend. for you, but as a person, but for your art. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, when, you, when, when it's realistic, you know, when you do a show and one person shows up, then in your head you're like, well, how do I make this two people? Mm, so okay, two people. How do I make it three people? people? You can start looking into working on your art more yeah. so you can expand, expand it yeah. you can expand true, that true, fan true. base right but yeah. if mm. a bunch of people show up they're yeah. like oh yeah i think it's good and nobody ever say you you, you performed horribly yeah. even though some you know we did a show man oh my god like horrible the band is horrible because <laughs> not not that the band was bad but the setup kind of got screwed over yeah. last minute yeah. so the band is like panicking and yo i came off the stage man and I was embarrassed even performing because you're watching and then people are leaving left, right, and center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you come off the stage and you go back and people, yo, great job, man. I'm like, no, I saw you leave, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you leave, bro. Like, no, I saw you, bro. I saw you with the red hat. Yeah, like, I saw you turn yeah, over there. <laughs> yeah, you don't come here tell me it's a great, it was a bad <laughs> show. <laughs> a, a monkey could tell you it was a bad show. But, okay, but this is the thing. This is, this is one thing. How do you, okay, even if it was a bad show, that person, that person put their time and their yeah, effort so into it. So even, oh, I, you could, okay, you could still tell them the truth, but you got to tell them in a see, way that's not like. Nah, see. Hey, we're homies see, though, bro, no, that's, see, see, we're see, homies though, tell see, me, bro. See, no, that's what, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying, like, bro, listen, like, if I call you my homie, I'm like, bro, we're chilling outside the creative side. My guy, bro, see, if I'm thinking bad, bro, thinking bad pictures, doing something bad, even if you don't have to, no, this is the difference. You can still put your point across, but still be respectful. Be okay, respectful. That's, 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 that's what I mean. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Because, bro, bro, like, bro, even with you, but bro, we call each other out on our stuff, 100%. but like, still, it's still that respect. Yeah. Like, that's the biggest thing, because, like, now, for example, say, for example, like, you give that example, the performance didn't go well. I'm not going to be in public and be like, yo, bro, you're a bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's embarrassing. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. But, like, if I'm like, yo, bro, like, yo, I call you myself, like, yo, bro, like, yo, listen. I'm proud of you that like, you actually did this, but bro, you could have done better. That, that's this is what, what you mean. can work you on. You can work on something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what but I mean. No, constructive no, criticism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, instead exactly. of you just going like, oh, bro, that was ass. Like, because then I'm going to be like, yo, bro. Especially if it's mm -hmm. from somebody that I care about, I'll be like, yo, bro, screw this guy, man. Even though, like, I'm still going to work, like, it's just how you say it. How yeah. you say it. You can yeah, still I mean, say it. It's I mean, just yeah, how bro, you say it. Bro, bro, yeah. emotions, bro. Honestly, me, this is just my own personal stuff. You can tell me any like any criticism, whatever. I'm okay with it. It's just the key thing is that respect. Yeah. As long as it's respect, I don't care. Like it doesn't move me that much. I'm like, okay, I, I try to understand where you're coming from, but the moment you start dissing me, and you're like, oh, bro, you you waste or something like that, <laughs> or whatever. Or, or, the, or, the, or for example, or like I said that example, like in the public where I just finished doing a show, and then right there when there's people around me that I don't even know, like people that are just trying to come to see my my craft. And then you're like, yo, bro, you're bomb. Something like that. That's that's a different situation. But like, mm -hmm. if you call me in the side, I'm like, yo, bro, you could have improved it. Like, you can do yeah. better. Even if you say it in a roasting way, that's okay. But I don't yeah, know. Yeah. The, the creative industry is uh, it's a weird, it's a weird, it's, it's a, a weird, weird industry. And sometimes bro. you need those. It's a balance of both, right? Yeah. And there's the, the haters. Oh, the haters I, that are never satisfied with anything. Yeah. I think there's people that just have just to hate. say. No, not even just want to hate, <laughs> but they just want to have a say. Yeah. And, yeah. But you know what I Into know something. though? You know something though? When you have haters, it means you're doing something right. That's what I'm saying. You need. That's bro, correct. You need. That's you correct. Because that. like, bro, I'm lying to you. When I, when I see that stuff, bro, I, actually, I genuinely use it as motivation, bro. Yeah. 
Bro, I look like at them yeah. like, you know what? I, I told my boy Selassie that the other day. He, he, he dropped this song and he was just like, whew, he was exploding. And he got more dislikes on YouTube than the likes. Yeah. And I called him, I was like, bro, you made it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, bro. That's, that's like 30 people that listened to this thing and chose to the click the, the dislike, dislike button. Yeah. Yeah. Effort you to made it. The effort to click that you button. You made it. Yeah. 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 Legit. Because you gotta, like, if you, you start getting that reaction out of people, that, that means people are listening. Yeah. Right? And I'm not saying nobody, I don't think anybody sits here and says, you have to like my stuff. No, you don't have to like my stuff. Choice. But just give it a fair shot. Yeah. Just listen no to it. No publicity is bad publicity. Yes, sir. Yeah. But, yeah, but give it a shot. Listen yeah. to it and, and judge it for what it is, right? Yeah. Don't start comparing me to Kanye West yeah. or anything yeah. like that. For me. I'm yeah, not yeah. Kanye West, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. Alan. Listen to yeah. Alan for what Alan is, you know? Yeah, true, true. And, and, and give me constructive criticism. We'll, true, we'll, true. I'll rock with it, you know? Appreciate it. Anytime, any day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Sir, anyways. So, so Alan, just on that, uh, on that note, Tell the people Bombay. all the things that you're that you're working on. You Ooh. know, tell them what you're working on, what's coming up. Call the secretary. Call the secretary. Yeah, you know, <laughs> tell, tell, tell I don't them, have one of those. Anything that you have I wish. Up, <laughs> let them let them know um, where they can find all the stuff that you're doing as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm wor- uh, right now working on the pretty much shifting from winter to sorry summer to winter this guy's already, this guy's yeah. already in the winter yeah. Yeah. <laughs> already man already it's yeah coming, there's, already, there's things we won't be able to do anymore out, yeah. in terms of outdoors right so we got to start getting into you know the jacket gear coffee. for yeah the yeah Mentally the jacket so ones, for yeah. That, coffee season yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah stick it in i it in <laughs> yeah so we got a couple shows that we're working on including my own show right, which is gonna be the first show in uh i want to say four three four years okay okay yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. Okay. uh that's gonna be sometime in november i think the dates will be coming out soon okay uh working on another big show with uzila that's sometime in december mm-hmm. uh planning something essentially it's like a whole party okay but a whole party kind of reinvented reinvented okay there's the, the, the old school mm-hmm. regular whole party but then we want to bring what we did out uh, that, yeah, that yeah, other yeah, show we want to yeah, bring yeah. it into it's, a whole it's, party it's, now okay okay, yeah. okay so okay, create okay, a vibe okay. there and you know bless. yeah okay. so it was lit so yeah, you guys know yeah yeah so we're trying to obviously security is the biggest thing because mm-hmm. you know one of the concerns that i hear when we talk about whole parties is the shootings and yeah. the, the people coming with machetes and all that yeah. that's the kind of details we're trying to work out yeah. to make sure mm-hmm. that when we do it people feel safe to come, come there to, yeah. and yeah you know and and at the same time balance it with how much is it how much security is invasive versus how much security is necessary mm-hmm. but we want people to feel safe yeah. so we're working on that um just a bunch of music for myself mm. uh yeah I got, I got, and we're gonna be dropping all those the, the links to so we can find the music yeah too as well. for, sure, yeah. for sure uh you can find my stuff at um alain and twali a-l-a-i-n hmm. underscore i-n-t-w-a-l-i that's a long name don't worry i feel, I feel like it's i'm dropped. reading an essay every don't time worry, i say it's my gonna name get dropped. <laughs> <laughs> don't even worry yeah that's uh, you don't want to have to remember it off the top of your head yeah, don't worry yeah 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 that's um uh, that's my ig yeah, I'm not I can pre- people gonna hate me for this one, but I I'm not on Twitter like that mm-hmm. yet. Yet. Nah, bro. Right, yeah. Avoid yeah. that shit, bro. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not on Twitter. Right, I'm not right. Nigerian, bro. Trust me, bro. <laughs> yeah. Avoid, bro. Yeah. Listen. I mean, I think it's, I think it's a difference, bro. Nigerian like Twitter itself, bro. I avoid that because, bro, one tweet you can you can blow up in one tweet, but you can also go down in one tweet. You can see Twitter, black Twitter, bro. bro I bro, go there to watch the news. Who we canceling this week? <laughs> Run that stuff. Getting canceled. But the good, thing, yeah. you know, the good thing about yeah. Twitter is that, bro, if you post the right content, dog, you can. I don't, to be honest with you, I'm gonna sound old as hell. I'm not old, but yeah. I don't even know how Twitter works. I, honestly, <laughs> but honestly, I'm I really with you. Don't. I don't know. Either. I go down like so. Uh, I can't even. I, I actually don't know how Twitter works. Yeah, I know. I know that. I know. I know retweeting something. Yeah, retweeting. <laughs> yeah, yo. I know but retweeting. I, I know liking. That's it. I'm yeah. only looking at sports tweets. So I mean, yeah. I, I don't even. Have, I don't know, man. Yeah, but yeah, and then the comedio is the way you hear it. B T H E C O M M U D I O. I hope that was correct. Boom, 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 link, boom, boom. Link, link, link. The link. Yes, sir. Yeah. Easier way. Got a bunch of things happening. 
uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, just follow those and we'll be announcing things. Don't sure. worry. We We're going to drop all those yeah, links in there so you guys can get that. Yes, sir. So, Ori. Uh, question. Is my guy ready? Oh, what, oh, what oh, are we oh, doing oh, here? Oh, you thought, oh, oh, you thought oh, it was oh, 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 I just did that so you get. I wanted to get. I wanted to get everything out of you. I wanted to get you comfortable, man. It was a trick. So it was like because we acted the other way before. Usually, yeah, it was a filter. If it was a filter, it was, we gave you me like we think it's over. Oh but nah. damn! Yeah, we okay. it's over. I feel, I feel, I feel like I feel yeah. like I need you guys to to sign a waiver. Oh, no, 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 listen, there's listen, information no, listen, no. No, 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 this that should not be released on camera. No, 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 no. no. This is a good one. No, this is a good one. Okay. So this question is gonna be. Hey, let me make sure I say it the right way. I gotta make sure. I, I gotta, hey, you say it the wrong way. Who cares? No. What? <laughs> me. It's pressure, man. No, no, no. no. Hey. What's your theory of the grind? Jeez, I said it right. Okay. I, I said it right. I said it yes, right. Yes, sir. What's what your is theory your theory of the, grind? of the grind? Theory of the grind. Grind. What does the grind mean to you? See what I'm saying? Mm. Can I use other words like hustle? Yeah, you can say it. Yes, that's what it means to me. Hustle. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, hustle. Hustle is a big one that, that I can think of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hustle. Hustle. Hustle twenty four seven, huh? Hustle, 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 hustle twenty four seven. Did you yeah. say that? Stuff? I she can't said hustle. Read. I got. What she said, I. Ah, she shit. said, I. I, I like the things. I like the things that I. I want to get the things that I want. Or I like nice things, yeah, or something so, like that. So in order so to get those things, things, I got to hustle. hustle. I got my hustle twenty four seven, and my grind something is something like 20. that. I can't remember. Yeah. I can't oh, remember. I see. Yeah, I was gonna get to drop the bars, but okay, okay. Oh, you trying to get me to drop bars? You see, I wasn't ready for that. Oh, I mean, hustle. It's a one word of bop. Still, still, that's still a strong one though. Hustle, hustle. Because I can like hustle is everything I can think of in one. You know what I mean? passion everything that i can think of just fall into that, that, that you need so your theory of the grind is you have to hustle i to, guess i can the now that i understand the question better, okay boom ba is for me personally is work like today is your last day hmm. like mm. you're not gonna be there tomorrow bless mm. and tomorrow's not promised that's yeah. yeah that's why promise. try to not apply that theory on money though because you get a million dollars spent right now nah, be I ain't gonna be here tomorrow when, gotta, when it comes to money think about the generation sure. but, uh, yes, um, after you oh, that's but for now for now everything else for me is like do something like you know not tomorrow. Like you're not gonna be tomorrow you're not gonna be here tomorrow to finish it that day yes I like that bye for the day I like that yeah I I thought I thought y'all got like a like a R-rated Part no, two no, no, to no, this no, thing, no, I'm no. like, oh, oh, oh. really? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's when I start bringing up waivers. I'm like, what are we doing? No, 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 no. no man, no. Is that the, that's, 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 that's the end question right there, you know? No, this PG 13. PG 13. Well, but don't worry, we might be getting paid. Nah, don't worry, we click the button, man. It's not for kids, man. It's not for kids. Yeah, so sooner we might be getting patron. Don't worry. Oh damn. I like, that. I like that. You gotta invite me again. We could, we but I feel button, like there's a lot of things we need to take off the chest. Don't worry. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Hey, yes. hey you, yes. heard, you heard that? You heard it here, huh? When hey, Patreon man. comes out, let we're, me we're, know. No, Patreon is already out. Is but right, we're gonna be on. Right. We're, we're gonna be on Patreon. That's what I want. Our on Patreon. Or maybe, or maybe you might do. You know, I you know right now. Only fans. Yeah, only fans. That's what I was gonna say. Yo. No, 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 the logo a pole yeah. down here in the yeah. middle of the table right <laughs> <laughs> and, and people are thinking something else is gonna happen after the show right? oh my god <laughs> that's that's one way to keep people in okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry the button is clicked y'all the button is clicked oh <laughs> <laughs> nobody your pole can be that's an entertainment for that's a form of, of sports actually yeah it's, yo, it's a dance yeah. you know it's, it's a, that yeah. takes a lot of core strength man <laughs> It does. I, I, I wouldn't know as you can see. I give up. I give up. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm he, dead. he gonna bring some spices in, you know. Bring some sugar and spice. <laughs> hey y'all. Hey y'all. It was nice having it you. It was a pleasure, uh, pleasure, pleasure, so pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And like he said, <laughs> we'll be back with 
Patreon. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we will see you guys next week. Like always. Yes, sir. New episode of the Grand Theory Podcast coming. Every Sunday. For all those who are commenting, liking, subscribing. Just liking. And disliking. I see you all. I watch Keep you. doing it. Keep doing it. I love it. Keep doing it. I love it. We need y'all. I need y'all. But we just do one thing for me. Make sure if you just like or leave a comment on why mm. so we can improve. Mm. You know, we preach the 1% better every 1% day. 1% better every day. You don't day. preach it, we practice it too. Mm. So come on. Somebody was mm. saying something interesting. They said they should do the thumbs down for Facebook, should create thumbs down, yeah. and, they should, and Instagram should create the, the broken heart. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> that'd be nice. <laughs> Let me know how you but, feel about it. Boom. And we out. We out. Perfect.